And we are back from that Twitch commercial. Uh, we have just hit another major milestone with four hundred twenty thousand dollars. So thank you to everybody that's made that uh, possible. <laughs> Sorry. Vulajin just giggling indiscriminately on the couch because he's a meme lord. Yeah. And uh, I think we're ready to go from the couch. So right. best of luck, Poexel, and take it away. All right. Are we ready to go? All right. So I do character control timing for this game. So it'll start about 20 seconds after I uh, start the file, and I'll let you know when that happens. All right. We are going to go then. All right, so this is Illusion of Gaia, which is an action RPG made by Quintet. Also made Actraiser earlier in the marathon. This is part of a loosely connected uh, action RPG trilogy, along with Soul Blazer and Terranigma. It's kind of loosely known as the Soul Blazer trilogy. And start. And then this is going to be a 100% run, which means um, collecting all 50 red jewels and then uh, completing uh, Gems Mansion, which is the um, optional uh, dungeon that's unlocked when you get all of the jewels. Before I started the run, I actually did some RNG manipulation in order to get that fisherman to appear on my way to the cave here. Otherwise, that would be a really, really, really annoying bit of randomness about uh, like a minute into the run. Uh, big shout-outs to... Um, uh, a runner in TAS or named Deseract who kind of cracked how the RNG for um, for that works. So we're getting through these cutscenes because we can do a quick roll call too. I'm Poexel. I'm Volgen. I'm Takaze. This is a fair bit of uh, just running around South Cape at this point collecting a couple red jewels and completing, you know, kind of the intro stuff in the game, uh, just the basic story events. So not a whole lot of, like, action-packed stuff right now, but it's going to pick up real, real soon. Yeah, I mean, it's only about five minutes, generally, to get into the first dungeon. Uh, one thing that I do love about this game, too, is that um, it's one of the only um, like RPGs where the English version is significantly faster than the Japanese version because of text speed differences, actually, because you notice how I'm just kind of flying through all these text boxes and cut these cutscenes here, because they're, they're drawing out one at a frame and there isn't any real lag before I can advance to the next box. That's exclusive to the English version. In the Japanese version, the uh, text boxes draw out one character at a time. So it's, it hasn't really been measured too much, but it's easily like a 15 to 20 minute difference between English and Japanese text. It's kind of unfortunate too, because the Japanese version is actually quite a bit easier, but for quite a variety of reasons, but uh, we are here to go fast. I have to wonder if there are Japanese players who uh, run the English version of this game. <laughs> yes, for faster text. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. This game has pretty music. Mm -hmm. I don't really like to talk about story too much during, when, during speedrun commentary, but just kind of the general premise of the game is that you're a boy named Will who uh, recently gained psychic powers after returning home from a voyage to the Tower of Babel with his father who disappeared as part of it. And uh, I guess you are off looking for clues to his whereabouts. And that eventually results in saving the world, of course. Naturally. So a little subtle trick I'm going to be doing to save, I think, about a minute and a half over the course of the run is whenever I move somewhere in the world map, I'm going to hold the start button after I enter my destination. Because normally, um, after you enter and then it displays the name of your, your, uh, where you're going, uh, the camera will zoom out and back in in glorious mode 7. But if you press the start button at any point, and you can even buffer it by holding it, um, that actually skips that. I, it's been a while since I 
looked at how much time each one saves, but it's it's very significant if you do it every every time you move. And then this is a fun little speed boost here. Whee! <laughs> so movement in this game largely consists of uh, dashing around, and uh, kind of a irritating thing for speedrun in this game is that the dash uh, requires you to double tap a direction on the D-pad. Uh, there's no other input that will do it. There's not like a button, so yeah, you're just constantly double tapping directions. That didn't get, that didn't get invented until Terra Enigma, sadly. <laughs> this is the uh, sequel. So this is this is a time-based um, story sequence here. I have to examine one section of the uh, prison bars, the ball and chain, and then one of the pieces of moss around the edge in order to start a timer before the uh, the bread appears here to advance. Where yep. else but a speed run would a description like that make any sense at all? <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to do a little fun exploit to save about half a second here too, because. Uh, um, after this next uh, bit of text here, we we um, have a, I mean, we did a little brief tutorial on how to use Will's telekinesis back in the cave um, in South Cave, where we had to move a statue. Now we get to do it again here to move to learn that we can use it to collect um, item drops from enemies. But I forget how long this is exactly. There's no depth physics in the game, so just standing in the corner there uh, makes the um, the crystal that you have to collect just drop on you and saves like half a second over actually doing what you're supposed to do with telekinesis. Another thing, if you didn't notice, uh, Will's dad is a flute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like it's too early to blow the punchline on uh, <laughs> certain other identities. Yeah. In this game. We'll get there. All right, so we're coming into Edward's prison, which is the first dungeon. Uh, despite how early in this in the game this comes, I consider this one of the more challenging dungeons to speedrun. I mean, because when you play this game normally, you're going to be fighting all of these enemies, and every time you kill every enemy in a room, they drop a jewel that permanently raises one of your stats, uh, strength, HP, and defense by one. But we're skipping all of that. So not only are our stats going to be low, but we also have the challenge of having to just avoid all of these randomly moving enemies that we have kind of tight uh, space to move around. So there's a lot of little techniques that Poexel is doing that we'll be able to explain over time. Uh, one little thing that he's about to do coming up. So he has to uh, kill this enemy here, not the skeleton, but this snake thing, to open that barrier. And then while the barrier is opening, uh, while the thing's flying towards it, he can actually open the menu. And that causes it to immediately actually go away, even though the animation is still going. So he uh, uses that opportunity to also uh, equip and use one of the red jewels he's collected and that causes it to fly away to gem the jeweler and uh, just saves him from some inventory space and uh, also of course gives him an opportunity to open the menu. Nice, got a health drop. Um, health drops aren't actually very all that common in this game. There's only specific enemies that can drop them, and the uh, drop rate is it's under. It, I, I don't actually know what it is, but it's I would guess it's between like 25 and 50 percent. Yeah, this this game is really really rude when it comes to your health. Yeah, especially if you're not increasing your HP and defense through normal means too. I will be getting some pretty significant boosts to my stats throughout the run to make it actually possible to finish in uh, in a single sitting. But we'll uh, we'll explain that mechanic once we get there. Not going to be doing the entire game at uh, eight HP. So yeah, here you only need to kill that one enemy to open these blocks. Then I could have used what I call the orb cancel glitch um, with going into the menu to go in here early, although there's uh, there's like one specific pixel I'd have to hit to enter the dark space early, but there's actually, it would actually be bugged and the free Dan statue would be missing if I did that, so I would have to just leave and go back in and it wouldn't actually save any time. Speaking of which, we now have the coolest character in the game. Mm -hmm. The coolest hair in the game. Exactly. I mean, that's what makes him cool, is the hair. Nice. 
So uh, what Pluxel just did there is uh, while he was running, he performed, uh, I don't know exactly what you call this trick. Um, iframe can't dashing is what I call it. Right. So he uh, performed an attack while he was uh, running and performed a quick uh, manipulation with the D-pad. So I was wanting to see if he got through those things without dying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and basically what you do is you let go of the direction, uh, attack, and then immediately hold the direction again. Uh, and you're able to attack and use the iframes from the attack animation to pass through an enemy. Yeah, you can technically do it with all three playable characters in the game, Will, Free Dan, and Shadow, but it's really difficult to do it as Will because um, doing, this, doing the normal inputs for it as Will causes him to do his jump attack because of the D-pad input there, so you'd have to actually cancel that by uh, doing a perpendicular D-pad input first in a super tight window. And to be honest, there really aren't that, unless you can do it at Will like a, a TAS, there aren't really that many points in the run where doing iframe dashing as Will would actually save time. At will. Like, really? <laughs> that wasn't even planned, but sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> Not my buddy, Brosentia. So, uh, we're about to get the best item in the game. <laughs> mm hmm. Arguably in any video game. That's right. And, uh, I'm sure the game will take appropriate lengths to uh, <laughs> show us to, just how to commemorate is. this momentous occasion. Here we go. <laughs> nom 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 nom. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> All that's missing is him holding it above his head triumphantly uh, Zelda style. <laughs> Got a few more cutscenes before we move on to the next uh, next bit of action, so you can probably squeeze in a few donations. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. Uh, I have $25 from Yagamoth. Oh, Yaga, morning, sir. He says, Puexel and IOG is an amazing combination. We have a Bob on the microphone and a random Vulagin <laughs> and a green Takaze. <laughs> Excellent. Enjoy the run. Thank you for running, and good luck. This goes to Takaze's choice. Uh... Bulletin's looking at me, so I'm going to uh, put this to good taste. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> good choice. We what am I surrounded by on this couch? <laughs> we have $28. Good from, taste. We have $28 from Ghost King. He says, hello, Puexel. Hey, Ghost King. Glad to see the man who got me into RPG speedruns and inspired me to become a runner gets a chance to run at another GDQ. It was awesome meeting you and dozens of other RPG speedrunners back in May. As a thanks, put half of this to runner's choice and half to Bob's choice. Uh, my even, choice is good taste. Your choice is good taste. Uh, even if that money does happen to go towards good taste <laughs> and not Demon Chocobo. Uh, for me, it's going to be naming the girl in Final Fantasy Adventure 80% Sam. So, thank you very much. $15 from an anonymous donator that says, Greetings from Japan. Best of luck, Poexel, on the run. You are my favorite speedrunner. I was going to go to sleep so I could go to work, but it looks like I may be sick tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, so coming up here, I'm just going to be doing a really minor, um, if you could even call it a skip, where I go in and out of this house, and that actually skips me having to wait for um, Lily and Kara to get to these stairs here, because the game just loads them already here. <clears throat> and now we're about to get our first uh, combat ability here. Um, your, I mean, which combat abilities you can use is based on which form you have, Will, Free Dan, or Shadow. And then uh, Will's first upgrade is called uh, Psycho Dash, which is required in order to get through this town, basically, because it can break walls. But it's also u very useful for um, fighting, too, just because it does... Uh, I forget the formula, but it, do, it does, at this point, do, twice as much damage as I can do with a flute combo, and I can get hit two hits with it, too, with the right positioning. I guess we didn't really mention the fact that Will is, in fact, fighting with a flute. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a very, very video game. Mm -hmm. and jump, jumped off the edge there to save a little bit of time. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I guess I, I, it's kind of weird to think about the idea of just swinging your dad <laughs> at enemies to beat them away, but. He seems to be largely okay with that. Another, another optimization here is actually to ram into that post next to the ramp there, because if you just dash down and go, you'll almost make it to the top of the ramp, which would, seems like it'd be, it'd be good to save time, but you just can't quite get there, and then you have to skid back down, so it's a little bit faster to just kill your momentum like that and then run for the ladder. So coming up here, we have a fight that's pretty obnoxious at, <laughs> in, at base stats like I am here, just because I have to kill, I think it's five of these caterpillars before 20 seconds passes or else I have to redo it. And they've got some pretty annoying randomness in their movement. So let's see how it goes. So he's going to use uh, Psycho Dashes. There he got uh, two of them at the same time, which is the sort of thing that he wants. Mm. That was really, really good. Good fight. Nice. So those guys can get really obnoxious really quickly. Um, it's it's more common to finish with like less time on that clock remaining. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, yeah. The, at the end they were really, really cooperative as far as clustering together like that. I mean, that's why I made the call to do a second dash instead of using the flute for the cleanup. There was a little bit of manipulation I was doing there too in that um, <clears throat> if you line up with one of them in a straight horizontal or vertical plane, they'll usually roll at you. And I really, really wanted to avoid getting them to roll down because if one of them breaks away from the group and goes to the bottom of the map, then I have to chase after it. And that makes just winning it all before the timer runs out a little iffy. All right, so we're to this cutscene here, we're entering the Incan ruins. It's got some of my favorite music in the game, and I just love the dungeon and the speedrun, too, just because it's got some really cool skips and uh, movement optimization. As a completely random tidbit, if you haven't paid attention before, the uh, music themes in the dungeons are the same. Uh, they're live motifs of the music uh, themes that you play with the flute. Sadly, we won't get to hear the uh, flute uh, melody for <laughs> the Incan Ruins. So he destroys that head there to open up the stairs that he can leave with, just uh, getting it on the way out as opposed to the way back in so that the stairs are already there when he goes back inside. And the, st the statue that I killed in this, n this previous room here is just part of the setup for this right here, because fortunately the hitbox for that um, slot for the diamond block there actually extends above the statue, so I don't actually need to kill it. But if I hadn't killed that other nice. one there, it would have shot me uh, while I was um, paralyzed in the cutscene and got that. That's a very, very minor time save, but it looks really cool. Oops. Yes, that's a very similar trick to the uh, iframe dash where he, um, while dashing, he does a similar input, but using the guard instead of the uh, attack. And uh, that one's really easy as well. It's not, uh, it doesn't require doing anything crazy. And yeah. <laughs> so that dance back and forth, he's able to hit that statue just barely. You're intended to get uh, Free Dan to be able to kill that, but while dashing, uh, if you time it right while dashing, uh, Will's able to get a little bit of extra range. Yeah, and then, and then uh, just speed up getting across the pit, too. I did a trick I call ramp boosting, which is where if you do a jump attack, when you're, or if you run up against kind of the top of the ramp and then do a jump attack with the right timing, you'll instantly build momentum and then zip across, basically. Right, it just saves. In that case, it just saves having to run around and uh, up the stairs to be able to get down the ramp. But later on, it's going to result in actual sequence breaks. guys can be trolls sometimes. <laughs> I can take it a little bit safer just to how I move to spawn them if my health's running low or something. Speaking of guys that can be trolls. Yeah, that's not <laughs> that's pretty rare to kill all four of them with one dash. 
Because I just bit there because they block the way n generally, so I just charge a dash, so I can just kill enough of them that I can um, get just get to the gem chest without uh, too much grief. As needed, I'll be taking safety heals by talking to Gaia. I don't actually have to talk to Gaia except for one occasion in the pyramid, which is the one of the final dungeons. Anyway, okay, so another the next part of the dungeon we're going to be skipping is getting the Melody of Winds, which you're meant to get and then play in order to highlight which tile um, opens the switch to the uh, next door. But if you already know where it is, you can just stand on it and skip, having to either get or play the Melody. Which is nice, too, just because um, if, if I had to, I would have to become Will, because Friedan doesn't have the flute. And then I'd have to become Friedan again to fight Kastoth, the first boss that's coming up here. Indeed. I will donate $1,000 if you manage to run <laughs> Get the quick kill, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably the uh, hardest trick in the game to do. I, yeah. for, in my opinion, it is, yeah. My wallet feels quite confident in this <laughs> bet. <laughs> uh, I don't think it has much to worry about. Oh. Yeah, All right, so he is totally safe if he stands in that bottom corner there. But uh, yeah, getting the one cycle on this boss is basically task only at this point. It's yeah, oh, it's very possible to do in real time, but um, I mean, just there's <laughs> you, there's a lot of RNG that needs to line up for you to even really have a shot at it between um, <clears throat> just because it's not really consistent as far as I know when he opens his eyes. And you need to already be in your in your sword swing animation when he does it, and kind of near the end of it. Right. Then you also have to he he has to do the same uh, pattern for both of his crystal shots, so that you don't have to uh, you won't either get hit or have to move to avoid the second crystal. And then you have to get all 20 <laughs> hits in with pretty much a frame perfect rhythm to around your um, cooldown. I've gotten it exactly once in the five years off and on that I've been speedrunning this game. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty, uh, I guess it's good to mention attack rhythm uh, because it's one of the most like important things about running this game that is kind of frequently underestimated. Um, in order to get like the maximum damage on enemies, you have to have a really good attack rhythm. There's a certain obviously amount of time before you can swing Will's yeah, weapon I th again. I think 17 frames, I think, is the number I've heard. Yeah, and so obviously the closer you can get to hitting the button exactly that often, the you know the more efficient you're being. But uh, it can be very easy to just lose you know little bits in time. Because yeah, if you just there. flat out just mash, you're not you're you're not going to be getting the most efficient rhythm. Right. And just because most of the, pretty much every boss in this game is cycle-based, uh, as far as there only being different specific parts of their cycle that you can hurt them, um, it's yeah, it's important to just get really uh, consistent at that. So we've got a few minutes of cutscenes here before, uh, well, <laughs> before getting to the raft, which <laughs> is uh, another another few minutes of cutscenes. So take it away, Bob. Thank you very much. Uh, it seems that Vulagin's faceless minions are rising up <laughs> as we have a $100 anonymous donation. All hail the demon Chocobo. We have $100 from Sweet Use who says, Puexel is one of the best commentators and speedrunners out there. Best of luck and thanks for doing this. Oh, thank you. Bug Under a Rug sends $100 and says, Illusion of Gaia was one of my most frustrating games to play when it grows up, though it remains one of my favorites. Good luck, runners, and save those animals. Uh, X, I, 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 so I guess it's 13 Lightning, donates $5 and says, Hey, Poexel, I woke up to the surprise that Illusion of Gaia had got added. And even better, I woke up just in time to watch it from the beginning. <laughs> Good luck. No, thank you. I have a $10 anonymous donation who says nothing. I mean it. There's nothing here. It's astounding. <clears throat> all jokes aside, guys, I love what you are doing. Here's to the runners, commentators, all of the tech people in desperate need of sleep, and all in this wonderful British accent. Also, let's not forget the animals. There's other things we need to achieve. Here's to the Sky Skyrim glitch exhibition. 
episode. Um, so the, anyway, for the raft here, I mean, every day has a, just a trigger I need to hit in order to advance the story. Uh, for the first day, I needed to talk to Kara twice and then eat the large yummy roast leg of yak. Uh, for this day, I need to just hit one of the fish and then wait about 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> this is so autopilot, I don't actually remember this exact <laughs> sequence, but... Um, uh, we'll have more comments in a bit, but the, when, the next, when I actually have to catch fish, uh, it's worth pointing out that um, the trigger for advancing is to have full HP, and I could actually use my medical herb that I picked up in the Incan Ruins in order to skip needing to catch eight fish, which saves about five seconds on average over the uh, time that catching the fish uh, takes, but uh, since this is a marathon run, I'm going to be saving that herb for a boss coming up at about the hour mark, which... Uh, is the most difficult boss in the game by quite a bit. And this would be it here. So, well, I uh, pray for good fish RNG here. Let's have some more donations. All right, I have sixty dollars from Rizukun. He says this illusion of Gaia run is so chill. It's the perfect run for chilling with my knitting while waiting for my plane. <laughs> Here's twenty dollars each to Poexel, Vulgin, and Takaze for whatever they want. So, I know you're a demon chocobo, you're good taste, so you're the tiebreaker, Takaze. <laughs> <laughs> I'll actually go for the Skyrim Glitch Exhibition. Wow, nice. <laughs> the cop out, though. <laughs> actually, let me check on that. Because that was very close to being met, so... If that's already met, I'll go for good taste, then. Oh, this guy. <laughs> No, nope, but we are very close to that. That's currently at $12,273 out of 12500 So we are close to Skyrim Glitch Exhibition. Um, Sharks. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is another time event, too. I can just talk to Kira twice and then do whatever I like, would like to amuse myself while waiting for the story to advance. The sharks don't come up onto the raft if you hit them with the flute. <laughs> You're going to need a bigger raft. <laughs> <laughs> or a bigger flute. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have time for a quick one? Yep. Okay. Static Toast sends $20. Oh, hold on a second. One oh. here, there. Will. Suddenly, Will <laughs> fell over unconscious. <laughs> That's one of my favorite text boxes in the game. Will is quite the overpowered narrator. So Static gives us $20 and says, I love Illusion of Guy. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Let's hope the vampires give you good RNG and that Trollfanger may not troll too hard. We can hope. <laughs> A lot of the red jewels that I have to get as part of the 100% category are actually permanently missable to like uh, everyone up until now, just because I can no longer go back to the South Cape or the other areas nearby and then like that one that I got I stole out of that guy's yard I, the only time I had to pick that up was after leaving the house before talking to Kara some of these are really rude too like the one on the uh, Incan boat uh, that you can only get what after sleeping it's after sleeping but before, but before um, yeah. triggering the shipwreck it's so <laughs> Stupid is a good word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fortunately, the, uh, the English version of the game did have a strategy guide in the manual that had all the jewel locations. So that's the sole reason I was able to 100% this game as a kid. <laughs> Speaking of rude, uh, <laughs> you have to do some pretty <laughs> despicable things in order to get 100% in this game, too. Like, here I'm actually going to be ratting out an escaped... Um, Slave, I mean, laborer, in uh, the English translation. To this creepy hooded dude. Like, <laughs> yep. who put something in my belongings, is what the text said. Super subtle. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm about to do the aforementioned uh, writing out escape laborer. Yeah. So, if you, if you haven't already gotten the idea, Will is a huge jerk. I don't think there's really... Oh, by the way, I just broke down a door with my flute. That's, I mean, that's that's my tool of choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Will, uh, there's not really a time during this game when Will doesn't do something that's just completely, like, jerky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Man, words are failing me today. <clears throat> All right, so we're coming into the diamond mine then, the next dungeon. Uh, objective here is to get, is to, re well, rescue the prisoners, though I only act technically need to rescue one in order to get what I need. But there's a decent amount of running around and uh, backtracking that I need to do to get some keys and then use them to advance. Although I'm going to be, this is the first time I'm going to be do taking an intentional death in order to uh, warp back to the entrance to the dungeon and then skip some backtracking. So I'll be doing that after I get the first key. There's some pretty annoying randomness with the enemies here too, most notably these purple beholder wannabes. Just because when they start their laser attack, they'll just move in, a, in, in oftentimes a pretty unpredictable uh, direction. If they decide to turn to stone, which they can just do, uh, they're just they'll just be in your way. So funny thing about that uh, worm he just killed, uh, if you psycho dash downwards, it won't hit it. <laughs> yeah, the hit, there's some pretty <laughs> funky hitboxes in this game. So he had to specifically psycho dash towards like the side and then that killed it because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a great dungeon. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't get the glitch. If you get hit while the wall is still exploding, you'll actually get released from paralysis, the cutscene paralysis, and you can actually start moving towards the uh, exit. And then the miner actually just de rude, just despawns um, uh, when he gets off what was intended to be the edge of the screen. So just to be clear, uh, when he, if he does die, he returns to the entrance of a dungeon. So he really, really does not want to die yet. Uh, he does want a death warp, but. Uh, not right now, because it would be a giant waste of time. And again, here you see more of the orb cancel glitch to uh, get rid of those barriers slightly more quickly, and also return a few jewels to Gem Jeweler, because he's otherwise oh, <laughs> nearly full. Snipe. That, wow. <laughs> <laughs> not, I mean, health drops always appreciated, but... Uh, yeah, it's in this it, case it's more more likely just going to slow down the death warp than actually make the make the next room safer. But yeah, thanks anyway. <laughs> so here we get our first uh, combat ability for Free Dan the Knight. I really love the name of this attack too. Also the fact that you can use it before the game tells you how to, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Friar. So the dark, as you just saw, there the dark fryer is a ranged attack that um, Free Dan can use when you, if you um, hold the attack button to charge up for a few seconds. It does the same amount of damage as I believe the Psycho Dash does, and you can also get two hits with it, with just because the 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 fireball starts out moving kind of slowly and then gains speed. So with certain enemies, you can uh, uh, knock them back so that they take a second hit from it. I do have to wonder sometimes what uh, the translators back in the uh, early 90s were thinking sometimes. <laughs> Stuff like Dark Friar. <laughs> yes. I would, like, my theory is that it would probably better be spelled F R Y E R, but. Uh, right. It's just such a more delicious name for an attack when it's spelled F R I E E R. Alright, so here's the first elevator key that I need in order to get to the next. Uh, Layer the elevator. I already passed the elevator um, in the second room of the of the mine. So actually, so this is where I'm going to take an intentional death in order to get back there faster. Another benefit of uh, death warping is that my health gets refilled as part of it too. So I was able to just play more aggressively, getting down to the first key, since I didn't have to worry about um, conserving health to dodge enemies on the way back out. Incidentally, I hope you like this music. You're gonna hear it a few more times. Yeah. Much as I love the soundtrack to this game, the generic dungeon theme, I'm a, gotten a little bit sick of just because it's used for quite, about half of the dungeons in the game. And uh, but I love the unique dungeon themes, though. 
I like how they uh, decided to uh, call the, the the slaves laborers, but then here they have just a morgue. <laughs> yeah. Ordinarily, I'd I'd get that key without actually fighting that snake, but I miss 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 lining up with the uh, hitbox for it. There's another room that is really annoyingly easy to just take a ton of damage. Uh, the nice thing is that these enemies occupy a single tire tile mostly. Uh, some of them, their hitbox is big enough that if you try to run above them, uh, you'll get hit. But uh, the little purple dudes, for example, only take one tile, so you can run around uh, the top or the bottom. Yeah, and then like for the lizard men, it's their like their legs basically or their hurt box. Taking some damage here isn't too much of a problem, just because once I'm finished with the diamond mine, I'm going to do another d uh, death abuse in order to get out. But I don't want to die before getting the key and using it, so. I played I played that room pretty conservatively. So sorry, other two laborers. Sam is the one that has what I need. This, I love this little Easter egg here too, just because the melody, the memory melody he's teaching you, which hey, it can uh, cure amnesia, just like in real life. Um, it's actually the music for Angkor Wat, which is a dungeon uh, I'll be going to probably about an hour from now which is the, in the part of the world where all of these uh, people uh, are from. Oops, ah, this way, yeah. Can I pop in with a quick donation? Yeah, please do. We actually, yeah, we've got a couple minutes of cutscenes. All right, I just received an anonymous $500 donation. Oh, wow. Dang. Hey guys, great job with an amazing event. Keep up the good work and good luck to all the runners. Save those frames and rip the animals a new one. <laughs> we have, uh, let's see here, $25 from Par. Went to bed thinking today was going to be a tight schedule. Woke up to find a surprise Poex 100% Eye Illusion of Gaia run. This week just keeps getting better and more awesome. One of my favorite SNES games run by a great guy with cameos by Vulagin and Bob and even Yagamoth in the donations. So I will match his $25 shout outs to the law runner. $20 from Starbugs. He says, greetings from Germany. I'm a first time viewer and donator. Happy to watch a game my mum didn't want me to buy because it looked too violent on the box. <laughs> 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 Thanks for making this week more enjoyable <coughs> at work and let's kill the animals. Welcome to SGDQ since this is your, your first time viewing. This must have, must have been the back of the box because as I recall the front is just the logo for the game and not much else. Well in fairness, I mean, maybe she did some research and figured out that you do swing your father at enemies <laughs> to beat them to death and uh, <laughs> abandon slaves to slavery in a diamond mine. Speaking mm -hmm. of which, <laughs> I have a $20 donation from Griffin18 that says, since some people in chat apparently haven't heard of Illusion of Gaia, here's a very quick plot synopsis. <laughs> your dad is a flute, your friend gets eaten by a whale, then they become a whale, a very sad thing happens to a pig, and you save the world by turning into a slime man. In short, this game rules. <laughs> All <Accurate>. true statements. <laughs> And I have an anonymous $100 donation that says, as a person with cystic fibrosis, I can't imagine being born in a place with poor medical care. What you guys do is amazing. Please keep it up. Save the people, kill the animals. You could also say this game promotes like poor hygiene because all that text I just mashed through was about uh well, read it for yourself. <laughs> I won't spoil. <laughs> On the bright side, they do promote, uh, you know, general health through uh, scurvy prevention. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we did get a tutorial on uh, how to prevent scurvy. $5 from Action Man says, mind blown. I spent so much time trying to get that blasted red jewel on the docks at the start. <laughs> <laughs> we all did. <laughs> 
and seeing it done so easily now. Shout outs to Childhood Nostalgia and SGDQ and all of its runners. And a five, an anonymous five dollar donation says, Hey Poexel, it's Eric Dark Knight here from Germany. I'm so happy you're running my most favorite game of all time. Unleash the Dark Friar and don't forget to eat some pork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. You didn't even go for it. Wow. Yeah, you can get you can squeeze between Kara and Lance to get to deal there, but it's pixel perfect. And if uh, if you miss, you're gonna miss pretty hard, basically. If you bonk into one of them. Fifteen dollars from Sir Banquo. Poexel's running. Here's an offer to give thanks to the Demon Chocobo, because he is such an awesome runner. Let's help doctors crush games and remember why we're really doing it. The demon chocobo commands it. <laughs> Hashtag never forget. <laughs> All right, so we're coming into Sky Garden, the next major dungeon. <clears throat> the Sky Garden's just, f it's basically four sections. Each one I have to find a crystal ball that I put into these slots here in order to build a bridge to the boss. And then the difficulty is pretty uh, inconsistent here too. Like this first section is pretty trivial as is the third one, but then the second and fourth are a bit harder. After each crystal, I'm going to be death warping back to the entrance, too, so... A couple places where I'm just going to choose not to run around enemies in order to wear down my health a little bit. I'm not going to do it quite as aggressively as I would in, like, a PB attempt, just because I don't want to die prematurely. So this dungeon has the really cool uh, gimmick that uh, you can go on both the top side and the underside of the dungeon. Um, and you, of course, have to in order to traverse it. Um, so every time you see him just kind of jump off the edge and then, you know, he's landing on the other side. Um, which is actually, like, it's weird. It's, it's not exactly, like, accurate. Like, if you jumped on the underside, it wouldn't be oriented the way it actually is, but whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun video game. <laughs> So this section's a little more difficult, just, well, just, just, there's a couple enemies that I have to kill in order to open passageways, and then, uh, so, and, and then there's, the more difficult fights that I have to do in the Sky Garden involve, like, having to kill a specific enemy while not getting murdered by others that are nearby. Because, of course, when he picks up Friedan um, and then subsequently Death Warps, uh, that's going to take him out of Friedan form. So he's going to, uh, in this dungeon, he's not going to care too much about that. But uh, in general, uh, you have to be aware of that, and you can't necessarily just Death Warp willy-nilly if you uh, willy-nilly. Nice. <laughs> 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 Sorry, it's too early in the morning. <laughs> Pretty fun quick kill there. And right, I'm just gonna fight these guys to be safe. Cause if I if they just cluster together in the corner like that, then if I don't get a good iframe dash through them, I'm probably gonna lose half my health in one shot basically and make this next fight pretty dangerous. And I grabbed a safety save at the uh, dark space there, actually, because if I'd have if I'd have been too slow at getting through that um, wall there after I did the uh, orb cancel glitch and opened the chest after the explosion animation started, it would have actually crashed the game. Uh, it's, I mean, if I'd have noticed that I wasn't going to make it in time, I could have just waited until after the animation to open the chest. All right, so this section's pretty fun. First I'm just setting up getting the uh, jewel. So the ramp is only one tile high. Oops. You can jump over it with a uh, jump attack like that. Yeah, because the way this section of the Sky Garden is intended to be done is that you, uh, it's kind of a puzzle section where you have to, um, through killing enemies on both the top and bottom side, you build a 
path across the whole bottom row there so that you can run and build enough momentum to just run up that ramp. But uh, yeah, we'll just we're just skipping that all all by uh, um, by using jump attack. And then right here, but to for doing this death warp after getting the jewel. That's one of the reasons why I picked up that, uh, why I dumpster dived for that um, single HP jewel in Phrygia, just because that gave me an extra HP in case that happened, basically, where I didn't uh, make it in time. And I missed the, uh... <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I was trying to do a ramp boost to get up there. Uh... Yeah, this section is fairly dangerous. Uh, there are a lot of enemies around, and he does need to make it through uh, a fair bit of stuff. So he just ran up and left there to spawn an enemy a little later on, uh, so that when he comes over here... Yeah, it's this fire snake right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would have died if I had if if hit the caterpillar there. So I'm very much going to be grabbing a safety heal here. Also, yeah, and I'm going to take a save too, just because if I do die in the next fight, it would be faster to reset and go back here than to get all the way back and become free down again. Is it, in order to... Um, Actually, I'm not going to talk during this fight. <laughs> yeah, there's enough enemies around here to Come on. make his life miserable, and he needs to move this statue onto the switch without getting killed, <laughs> which he has done. There is an alternate strat for this <laughs> puzzle here, too, where you can actually get hit on purpose by the sword and then abuse the fact that when you're in iframes, you can't, you won't jump off the uh, ledge here. But um, if you mess it up, it's pretty, pretty significant as far as getting back up here. And I've heard there's also a, a chance to soft lock if you die while, do, tr while doing it, too. <laughs> was, uh, was that one of the ones found by DJ? Um, I believe so. Actually, not 100% sure myself. So here's a boss. Yeah, this is Viper. Oops. Ah, I messed up the positioning there a bit. So he's going to be trying to uh, manipulate Viper to kind of do the swoop thing, and mm -hmm. it's going to be doing the uh, jump, jump attacks during that. And even though this is uh, probably one of the easier bosses, uh, he still dies in two hits, so he still has to be very careful. And he, yeah, he swooped the wrong way. Should still get a three cycle, though. Um, actually not. Almost. It's all good. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> all right. So something we might not have mentioned earlier with cast off, uh, as you might have noticed his HP just went up a full bunch. Oh, yeah. Uh, so whenever you kill a boss, you, uh, uh, well, let's start with this part. Earlier, Poexel mentioned that uh, when you kill all the enemies in a given area, you get a power-up. Uh, it either increases your HP or your attack or your defense. Nice catch, by the way. Perfect. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Um, fortunately, falling on a moving airplane in the sky does not cause your legs to telescope. Uh, I highly recommend that you try it. I'm sure it'll work just yeah. fine. Um, yeah, shout outs to Lance, by the way, and his how he's just kind of casually hanging on to the <laughs> tail of the plane like that, too. That I mean, I'm sure that's safe. Um, but yeah, so uh, every time Poexel goes through a room without killing all the enemies in the room, he's skipping a power-up he could be getting to one of his three stats. And uh, when, you end, when you get to a boss and then kill that boss, it actually just says, okay, well, you killed the boss, so whatever. And it just gives you all the power-ups that you skipped. Um, so that means that you're basically significantly underpowered until you get to the boss and until you kill the boss, but then you get a big catch up. Yeah, and then another mechanic too that's very nice too is that your strength stat is actually irrelevant for bosses too. The amount of damage you do per hit is just completely based on your form. It's one one damage per hit for will, two for free dan, and then three for shadow. Right. So it's really pretty much uh because of that and the fact that you really don't need to fight a lot of regular enemies, uh, it's 
almost never faster. Well, I think it's never faster to like farm the enemies on a level mm -hmm. to get one of the power ups. Yeah, there's two situations where I can do it for for safety. One of them I will be doing for sure. The other probably not. It's probably a good time for donations, yeah, huh? Is, basically, I'm just going to be going through this palace, getting three red jewels, and then um, get, purifying the uh, the poisoned well at the bottom in order to, um, cure, I guess, turn the people here from monsters into people or something. Cause, uh, which <laughs> or I only do something. because one of them casually stole the key to move from the vampires and says, here, you take care of it. All right, I have $50 from the amazing toaster. He says, Vulagin, I'm so sorry you have to sit between these two non-believers. <laughs> All glory to our Lord and Master, the Demon Chocobo. Suze Hero sends $20 and says, Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't just sneak a speed run of one of my favorite SNES games ever on us on the dead of night like that. If I had known this was going to happen, I'd have played my entire schedule around it. $50 from Eric F. that says, I love that you guys are doing Illusion of Gaia. It was one of my favorite games growing up. It does so much to plant the seed of wonder about the world we live in. Thanks to everybody involved for doing such a great work for such a great cause. Kale sends $50 and says, Thanks to very much to everyone behind the scenes and all of the runners for another fantastic GDQ. $10 from Anonymous. Hey guys, I'm so happy to be watching one of my favorite runners playing one of my favorite games. Always awesome to see more RPG runs at GDQ. I'm sorry, Poexel, but I must proclaim all hail our Dark Lord, the Demon Chocobo. Thanks for the donation. <laughs> <laughs> So a little, um, I, I waited until after purifying the well to get that third jewel too, just because if I'd have gone for it first, there would have been some enemies that would have been a little inconvenient to avoid in the way. It's also probably good to mention uh, just about inventory management. Earlier we mentioned that he sometimes consume, uh, consumes the red jewels to send them to Gem uh, when he's doing, you know, orb cancel glitch or really just periodically in general um and as you might have seen during that inventory trip or right there just now uh his inventory is really full uh i mean literally full so uh he really needs to make sure that he's got space for the stuff that he's going to pick up uh in Moo, there's going to be a couple items he's going to pick up so he uh needs to have that space or else he's going to just get stopped when he gets to those things yeah, and then the route for for do, using the jewels is a little bit different for the my marathon safe route than the one I'd use for a PB attempt too, but just because of holding more medical herbs, meaning I have less other space to use. So Mu is an extremely long and confusing dungeon. Um, you end up running around the kind of the same area multiple times after lowering the uh, the water, um, and it's very difficult. There's lots of enemies that deal lots of damage and uh, don't like you very much. Mm -hmm. I mean, one one for very fortunate thing about Moo is that I'm not really too under leveled at this point, just because my stats all got cut up when I finished the Sky Garden. And I haven't done any other dungeons. Since then, I mean, this there, I guess you could technically call the Seaside Palace a dungeon, but it's but it's a weird one in that you don't there's no stat boosts from any of the enemies. In fact, you can't even kill them normally. I think if you just if you run out their HP, they just phase out phase out basically. I think because they're supposed to represent uh, NPCs that have been turned into monsters. So here's everyone's favorite enemy, the Wizrobe. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea what they're actually called in this game, but they're yeah, they're, they're, they're Wizrobes, and they're just as big jer of jerks as Wizrobes in the Legend of Zelda series. It may, lo it may look like I'm just picking this statue up out of just a <laughs> random spot on the floor, but this is a little puzzle where there's two statues that are currently both off screen that are and where they're eyes line of sight intersect is where the uh the statue is and uh 
my friend Lily here is now giving me a tutorial on how to find the statue that I just got. It's actually a fairly clever like puzzle design because they have a bunch of chests in various other places in Mu as you approach here, uh, where the chest is positioned so that there are two statues facing it the same way. And, uh, you know, it's an RPG. You're going to open the chest. So, like, you're like, ooh, treasure. <laughs> and there's nothing in them. But by the time you get to the third spot, you see those two statues and you know what's going on. Yeah, and then there's a pretty, there's a much more complicated version of that puzzle to get the second statue of hope too, where the right. um, the statues that give you your cue are pretty far apart from each other. I think you have to kill enemies to even make them appear at all too. It's been a long time because it's not required to find the statue. There's a few, like, we're, actually I did it on the way in, but I don't need to do it on the way out, too, where I'm abusing the fact that Will is invincible when he's doing some of his attacks. The only one I have at this point is the jump attack with the flute, so I did that to get over the spikes there here earlier. Now this is a prime place to get Wizrobe trolled. Oh, here we go. All right. That wasn't that bad. Yeah. They can and will just spawn directly in front of me and uh, give me a high five. So there's a skip coming up here too, where you're supposed to have right end. And I'm just gonna kill this guy for marathon safety. You're supposed to use free Dan to uh, to um, to wake up that golem and get past. But I can abuse the fact that there's actually a row of pixels at the top of that ramp. To, that counts as solid ground, and I can actually just get up there and hit it with the fluid. It, the, the closer you pull the bouncy ring, as I call it, the uh, easier it is. And I, I had it at first, but then I messed up the rest of the inputs. Oh, Jeez, man. This, this guy. All right. Just looking pretty good on health right, still, though, just because uh, his robes haven't... Uh, it should be mentioned that he's not planning on death warping in this dungeon, so... Not yet, at least. I do after getting the second statue. Oh, okay. Completely forgot that one. <laughs> it's a really, really significant uh, skip, too, just because uh, there would be a lot of backtracking otherwise. All right, so here we actually get what I consider to be the most uh, overpowered combat ability in the game, the Psycho Slider. Um, it's... Basically, if you just press the attack button while running, then Will just does a slide. But it does the same amount of damage as the Psycho Dash, um, but, in, but you don't have to charge it up. You just attack while running, and you cannot get two hits with it, too, f just based on positioning uh, when you start and end the slide. Right, so it's not only going to be useful for killing enemies, but also for, like, passing through enemies. Uh, if you, you know, even with the knockback when you hit an enemy, if you time your Psycho Slider at the right place, you're going to pass through it. Yeah, I'm probably going to be, depending on the RNG I get here, I'm probably just I'm probably going to use it to get through that there. Right. So you also get the iframes from doing that attack. <laughs> <laughs> little back scratch there. And then it is a required ability, too, because it lets you slide through certain gaps like that, too, which I need in order to uh, complete Moo. I don't, I don't think I ever explained this, too. This is what I call guard dashing, which is basically what it sounds like. I'm uh, doing the same inputs as I would for um, iframe dashing, only with, with the L or R button instead of the attack button, and then that lets me move while guarding. And I am technically guarding and using telekinesis while doing it, too. So it was a really minor optimization to that uh, bounce ring puzzle there. So this is where, as mentioned, there's two statues far off in the distance staring at this one spot. Um, but of course, he already knows what the statue is. So, And then the, the, play, the second room of hope where I need to use this to lower the water level again is conveniently located right next to the entrance to Moo. So now I'm going to take an intentional death to warp back there and save probably like at least a minute or two worth of backtracking.
going all the way back is actually only only happens if I die with under a hundred dark gems too. <laughs> Those are the little silver orbs that regular enemies uh, usually drop when you kill them. Collecting a hundred of them gives you, I think the game calls it renew power, which is pretty much a one-up. And if you have that, if you die, you'll respawn in the same room that you died in instead of going back to the entrance. But in a speedrun, that would actually be bad. Also because you, it only gives you half health instead of full health to despite this supposing, su supposed to be a bonus. Oh, this pattern. Huh. <laughs> uh. What a jerk. It's a pretty rare pattern for him to uh, guard that hallway like that. He usually just c conveniently walks up left or right instead. Wait, where am I going? <laughs> blanked out and thought I was uh, back at the start. I was just going to say, <clears throat> I was wondering why you didn't slide through the gap, and I just thought maybe I didn't remember the game as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Casual on the fly rerouting. <laughs> so the one last order of business before I get to the boss, the uh, the vampire couple, is to get to Rama's statues, but they're pretty, they're really fast to get compared to the statues of hope. For really? The, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> For the second statue, I'm going to be uh, showing off a uh, an, I an interesting glitch to. I'll explain it after I do it. So by opening the chest with either either in the middle of a jump attack or a slide, if I do this with a chest that has a key item, uh, it has the nice little effect of making me completely invincible. Um, it's although un if I either do an attack that that causes it again, uh, that or leave the screen that I did it on, then I'm invincible again, if that's a word. So it's not quite as useful as it sounds, but like there, just because the time to set it up is pretty trivial, I did it just to make. Um, remove the risk of getting hit by the enemies on my way out. So I'm grabbing a safety save here just because uh, if you die, you don't generally lose progress in the game, but you don't get back any medical herbs that you used. And then this next boss coming up here is the most difficult in the game, and I've been saving my three herbs specifically for this fight. Yes, yeah, so I recall that we mentioned that this game is really rude when it comes to your health. Uh, there are a very small finite number of medical herbs or medicinal herbs in the game uh what's well, it's like single digits isn't it uh it's more like maybe 15 16 okay. something like that i think there's more than you can actually hold at once including the stuff like lola's melody that you have to hold <laughs> nice and uh those don't even restore all your health either so uh yeah <laughs> Actually, they restore less health in the U.S. version than they do in the Japanese Yeah, it's 8 version. HP instead of all of it. Yeah, so he's going to need to have those as a safety buffer on this boss, which it's is... some serious time here. Yep. Hardest boss in the game. You can explain what I'm doing as I do it, though. Sure. So, basically what he's trying to do here is perform attacks in a set rhythm so that he is always passing through the herd boxes of those vampire attacks as they're going. Uh, the vampires themselves don't have herd boxes, it's just the projectiles. So as long as he does these vertical attacks with a pretty good rhythm, which he's doing pretty well so far, he should be fine. He also almost is taking down the male vampire. The male one is actually a lot more dangerous than the female, so that's really nice to get out of the way. The, the way they move around the, the female one uh, tends, you can think of the map kind of a, as a grid. She will only move like one space in the grid, while the male will move anywhere he wants, which is a little unusual why he took down the male one first, because usually he's off in the corner doing his own thing. Right. He just got really lucky, and that was good. fantastic. That was a really good fight. You can uh, kind of time your 
yourself how well that fight goes just based on the bomb timer. So 85 is a pretty solid time. Yeah, and the fact that I didn't even need to use any medical herbs at all is really, really, really good, too. I'm so happy with how that fight went. Yeah, the man, the, the male vampire was super cooperative. He was really, really, really yeah, because, yeah, like um, Takaze said, the male vampire can do longer teleports around the room than the female can. And it was really, he was really cooperative as far as just letting me catch up to him and uh, set up some uh, jump attack loops. So you'll just have to remember that uh, you have all three of your herbs. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. I'll fill up on your inventory later on. Yeah, I'm going to need to be care pretty care mindful of that, too. Just start eating them randomly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I get the munchies. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, yeah, the vampire... I mean, the difficulty of the vampires comes just because it's there's both tight execution you have to do as far as timing the rhythm for the jump attack loops, and there's just a lot of randomness to react to, too, as far as... Um, how they move and uh, attack, but yeah, the re really convenient thing, like um, the legend said, is that they they don't deal contact damage to you, so you can just camp out inside their hitbox and then um, time the jump attacks so that you're not get taking damage from their shields. And you really, really, really don't want to get hit by their combo attack too, because without the stat ups from Mu, it does I think like roughly half of your max HP in one hit. But fortunately, it's pretty easy to avoid if you know it's coming. All right, so we got a bit more cutscenes before getting to Angel Village, so let's have some donations. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look here. We have $5 from Jim Jam. He says, I love seeing Puerks are running this game. Perfect way to start my work day. Hopefully my boss isn't watching the stream as well. <laughs> Money goes to runner's choice. $7 from an anonymous donator that says, I could never beat Illusion of Gaia as a child. Those vampires always wrecked me. Here's some money to pay them back from preventing me from getting farther in an otherwise gorgeous game. Yeah. Public service announcement. If you play this game normally, please, please, please get free Dan before you fight the vampires. Uh, the reason we don't in the speedrun is because um, you'd have to do about a two and a half minute detour to go to the other dark space in Mu, because the, unfortunately the one in, uh, that you get the Psycho Slider from doesn't also have a Free Dan statue, but uh, the other one that I never actually went to does, and yeah, getting Free Dan halves the number of hits you need to kill each vampire and also gives you a ranged attack. And it's still a hard fight, even with that. <laughs> All right, so this is the first time I uh, can talk to Jem the Jeweler without having to uh, go out of my way in any real manner. So I just cashed in <clears throat> all of the jewels I was holding there, and that gave me w plus one to all of my stats, along with a minor upgrade to my uh, Psycho Dash, which I'm going to be making use of exactly once in this dungeon. <laughs> Got some really fun quick kills against these lizard enemies here if I get them right. Oops, which I didn't. So I guess we get to use the. Uh, and bats are jerks. Use the dash instead. What I was trying to do there was psycho slide and then kick both hit the hit lizard and then kick the bat that was nearby into him. To 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 do to finish it off. Two health drops, man. You should consider buying lottery tickets. Didn't get any from those, though. <laughs> right, just because I messed up that quick kill and took a ton of damage, I'm actually going to use one of the safety stat ups here. And I'll, well, I'll still do it anyway, just <laughs> just because I said I was going to. But. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just killing both of those gives me an HP plus one HP, which whenever you get an HP up, it refills your health to full, too. Right, so there's two rooms in the game where there are two enemies, uh, and that's all you have to kill in order to get this bat up. So, yeah, so it's a pretty short uh, time loss in order to get a full HP refill there. Yep. Some kind of clever puzzles here, too, because, like, for the first one, the secret door was where the flames were bent towards, and then for that one, it was based on an audio cue for when the sound of the waterfall was loudest. And then here we've got some memory puzzles. Where I have to identify the uh, 
object that's different. Fortunately, it's, there's no randomness at all. It's the same solution every time, and the uh, detection for selecting it is pretty generous. Like these first two rooms, it's the jars. This next one's a little, I need to, <laughs> need to not space out too much though, because uh, the difference is what's in the chest. It's an herb in the first room and a red jewel in the second. But uh, after I solve the puzzle, if I actually leave the room without getting the jewel, I can't go back in. Fortunately, I've never lost a run to, uh, to doing that, but. Uh, Just like one of the uh, 25 or so red jewels that are missable and then you can't go back to get them. Mm -hmm. That's the last one for quite a while actually until the Tower of Babel. What a troll game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for the last puzzle, if you didn't catch that, uh, the difference was in the first room there was no wind. In the second room you can see Will's hair moving around. So if you just mash, uh, uh, mash the kind of input, then you're, you're already selected on yourself. Let's see if I can get the world's most awkward hug here. <laughs> uh, yeah, being at the edge of the portrait when I kiss it. <laughs> yeah, so after I'm past the vampires, the next leg of the run for about half hour or so is actually a lot more relaxed just because... Um, yeah, I mean, the fact that I have the Psycho Slider make, and that I, just that I'm invincible while doing it makes just getting through or around enemies a lot uh, easier. And also, this is probably the least efficient route they can take, by the way, to get from Angel Village to uh, Watermia. But I uh, guess they're just enjoying the scenery. I love this perpendicular turn. And then this 180 <laughs> yeah. degree, like, all right. Yep. I mean, that's how I get from place to place. Yeah. I can put in some more donations here. Basically, just the next thing I have to do is, yeah, just go find um, Lance and his father, and then um, do a re get watch some really really awkward uh, teen romance, and then do a kind of a really trolly event trigger where I have to read a letter that Lance snuck into my uh, inventory, and the game didn't give me any kind of clue whatsoever that he did. All right, the invincible Flom Loller is back, making good on his promise from earlier with $25 saying, as promised, I have done anything again during Poexel's run. Great job on the vampires and all of Moo. That is the hardest level for me, but you made it look super easy. Looking forward to seeing the rest of your run. My donation goes to Runner's Choice, which as we have learned by now is Demon Chocobo. I, uh, I mean, uh, good uh, taste. Uh, uh. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> I tried, man, I tried. Uh, I have $5 from Coding Genesis who says, Hi there, boys and girls. My second time watching and second time donating. I've always admired what Doctors Without Borders are doing since I learned about them back when I was a child. Seeing them getting these huge amounts of donations by video games, which are my biggest hobby and passion, honestly astounds me. Everybody at GDQ, give yourselves a big round of applause since what you are doing is so wonderful. Okay, you guys are just great. I hope one day to be part of a GDQ myself. Put this donation to good use for those who need it regarding the marathon, that is. So save the animals. I have $75 from Christian who says, Hi everybody, Illusion of Guy is awesome, but do we have any plans for Soul Blazer in one of the next marathons? Also, this donation goes to Family Jewels 7X's soundtrack. The Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Awesome game and even more awesome soundtrack. Everybody have fun and thank you to the people involved. Arct gives us $50 and says, Hamlet is still one of the most tragic moments in video games. Spoilers. <laughs> if he has to die, then the other animals should live. All right, so we got the Great Wall here. Um... Kind of a lengthy dungeon, although I'm going to be doing some sequence breaking and doing some uh, some stuff kind of out of the intended order. And then the, it's I mean it's a kind of a long series of events. That, and then the ultimate payoff is that I can skip the final section. So I'll just kind of explain each part as I'm doing it. And then for the, some a lot of these archers, I'm going to be trying. I didn't get it there. Trying to um, 
Okay, got that one. Trying to start my slide when I'm close enough that um, I only hit, get one hit in, so then I can just keep running afterwards instead of having to kick again or run around them. Right, and that requires uh, actually a fairly precise timing with uh, the Psycho Slider relative to the enemy position. And so, whee! <laughs> Splat. <laughs> <laughs> For this next archer here, I'm intentionally getting two hits just to make uh, getting back between them a lot more easy. It's the one and only jewel in uh, Great Wall. That's a big part of actually why 100% is only about an extra 10 minutes over the any percent category of this game is just because the bulk of the red jewels are in the towns instead of the dungeons, so I don't really have to... Uh, go out of my way in dungeons and fight extra stuff terribly often, if ever. Can I just make a very quick announcement? Yeah, go for it. I just wanted to let you guys know that we have met the Skyrim Glitz exhibition. So we have made the 12,500 that we needed for that. So thank you to everybody who donated. <laughs> T-Chops will be pleased. So coming up here is, is the first sequence break I'm going to be doing in the Great Wall. I do that by sliding into that ramp here, because in order to get into this particular section here, you're supposed to have the spin dash, which is Will's next uh, combat ability. But by doing that slide there to kill my momentum, I can um, gain access to this part without spin dash. And um, the whole reason why I'm coming in here is to get uh, Friedan who I need for one specific use later on. Speaking of Freedan, I have a $15 donation. I never actually knew you could use Freedan while fighting the vampires. Oh, no. That, I'm sorry to hear I'm that. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm so Here's sorry. Here's $15 from that tip. Also, save the animals. Thank you, Atarian. I just killed that one. Forgot he'd still be there. Okay, so now that I have free Dan, I'm actually going to skip this next section for now. Now meaning like 20 seconds or <laughs> even that. Because the only use that I ha need free Dan for in the Great Wall is just to, to shoot this guy. Because uh, he r opens that uh, barrier in front of the stairs going down there. So now that that's done, now I'm going to go back and do this section. Which is where I get the spin dash. That is a much less satisfying fall. <laughs> yeah. So because I've already done what I need with Freedan, um, and, and then I'm in Freedan form, that I, I turn back into Will form when I learn Spin Dash. So that's going to let me do the next section as, um, as Will instead of Freedan, which makes doing another skip that I'm going to be doing in that part easier than lets me skip the entire uh, area afterwards because I'll already be full and able to use the spin dash to get to the boss instead of having to explore the final area and then find a dark space to transform. What a great description. <laughs> use the attack and LR buttons for power. Yeah, Nailed yeah, it. yeah. I have to charge up like, I, like for, oh, by the way, go and up. That is really booking it up those stairs. Cardio. Yeah, you have to charge up and then do, and then start mashing the L and R buttons. You have to hit them like five times total or something like that. Something like that. All right, so this is meant to be a telekinesis puzzle here where I move these dolls around and then you hit the switch to turn them into archers and then kill them, but I can just do this instead to... Uh, it's a form of telekinesis. ...to get past them. Shoutouts to Nitrodon, another runner of this game who taught me that trick a couple of years ago. Oops. Okay, and then because I'm already will, I can skip going down those stairs to uh, explore this part. Instead, just go straight to the boss. Ah, uh, the boss. Yes. Okay, so this is Sandfanger, also known as Trollfanger, who's the easiest boss in the game, in my opinion, but also the most random as far as um, how just how what he does affects how quickly I can kill him. I've already seen two of his attack patterns. 
not all three now. Yeah. So I really, what I really want to see is one, that one he did first, where he um, pokes his head out of the sand and then spits some eggs, just because I can get up to eight hits, I believe, in one of those um, patterns, whereas with the two different diving patterns, I can only get two. Unfortunately, it's only a one out of four chance for him to do the egg laying pattern. Or in speedruns, approximately one out of like 136. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, approximately. And when he does the eggs, I mean, he's got several different kinds wow. of eggs, so I'm trying to uh, position myself so that... Wow. What is that? Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell just by the d the colors of the eggs, then with the, the, then just the pattern that he spits them out and what they're gonna do after they hatch. And the the only real the only real way that I could die to that boss is if I lose control of the uh, baby uh, fangers that he creates, because they just start they start popping out and shooting shots at me while I'm trying to deal with the uh, with the actual boss. So that was overall a really really good fight as far as the RNG I got. It's kind of just an. I, lo I mean, I love so much about this game as a speed run, but not really so much this that boss, just because of how late in the run it comes and how it's just totally up to luck as far as how fast you can win. I appreciate Lance asking Will to take care of Lily, so Will just leaves. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Good Quint job. Quintet games are pretty yeah, infamous for uh, you just abandoning your loved ones like that. So well, we've got some more uh, awkward uh, young romance here. Can squeeze in another comment or two. Actually, what I would like to do is encourage those guys that are donating to take a look at some of the other donation incentives we have available. I know you are all very, very passionate about save and kill the animals. However, we have a bunch of other stuff that is unmet at this point. Good taste. <laughs> That's much later, Paul Axel. <laughs> Sorry, did we, I say that out loud? Only slightly. <laughs> um, so uh, coming up, the next unmet incentive we have is during Trials Fusion, the invisible bike is sitting at $1,033 out of $7,500. So that could use some love. And then for Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, there is the bonus run of Two Worlds that is currently sitting at $2,792 out of 5,000. So please, as much as we love the fact that you guys like to save and kill the animals, there is a lot of really cool stuff sitting around uncompleted. So please put your donations in towards yeah. those. Oh, and thanks to everybody that crushed the incentive for this run to, to, uh, to um, actually get 100% and complete Gem's Mansion fight uh, Salad Arm too, which we'll be doing pretty late in the game. Speaking of bonus content, how are we doing on The Witness? On the witness, let's take a look here. With the witness, we are sitting at. Don't, don't do this at home, by the way, folks. <laughs> For the witness, we are sitting at one thousand one hundred ninety-two dollars out of ten thousand. You have until like tonight to get that done. I think I think we can get it done. I like to view this mini game as Will being a horrible person again and using his um, psychic powers to cheat, as far as knowing which of the cups is poisoned. If you weren't able to read the text while he was mashing through it, basically he just played a Russian roulette, but with uh, drinks that are poisoned, or a drink that is poisoned. And this dude, who is a man of honor, insists on drinking the last drink that yeah. is definitely for sure poisoned. <laughs> yeah, if you read the text there, you do find out that he was terminally ill and was gambling basically to make sure his family was taken care of, but Will still a jerk. <laughs> This is a Will doesn't know that. Yeah, he didn't know it at the time for sure. <laughs> this is a family-friendly game. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Maybe that uh, donator's mother had uh, knew something about the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So there was one more jewel that I could have gotten there and haven't yet. That's in the ca the uh, the big casino area. That's because there's actually this is another kind of trolley move by the uh, developers where the one and only time you actually have to backtrack to a previous area to find a jewel is coming up where you have to go back to Watermia and talk to um, Lance to get a jewel. And then because when I do that I'll have over 30, which gives me um, a upgrade for Friedan's Dark Friar that I'm gonna, and the and Gem the jeweler is in that room. I'm just going to go pick it up then and then immediately cash it in. 
do, should do quick a quick inventory check though, just to make sure, given that I've got all those herbs. A set of fireworks. There's gonna be we're gonna see that, right? A la like the ending of Chrono Trigger or something like that, with some cool uh, Mode Seven parade and fireworks. Right, well, right, right. When you use the dark fire, maybe. Not so much. I like to call that the low budget party. Okay, let's see. No, I'm actually fine. Out of all the jewels in the game, this is the only one that I find kind of tedious to get, and it's not really that bad. I need to get, get three of these apples and give them to a maid in the Rolex mansion here. I'm going to give her two of them now and then get the third apple, but I'm not actually going to give it to her until I have to come back to advance the story. In case you needed a reminder of how arbitrary some of these red jewels are to acquire. I'm trying, and then what I'm trying to do too, just to speed up getting to the apple merchant, is just run down that ramp and then bonk into one of the other uh, stalls or uh, pillars nearby too, to kill my momentum. To save like a second or two over just going straight and then back up. You'll really like the... Uh, plot trigger coming up next to after I get this other <laughs> horribly placed jewel in the alley there. We've got an elderly couple here that's arguing about rumor, th here, the rumors about a magic teapot that has ghosts in it, so we're going to go find it of course. after getting more jewels. <laughs> this seems like a great expenditure of our time. <laughs> yes. Probably a good time for some donations. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go get Lance's jewel now that you ha that you can't get until after you've left Water Mia, and then go cash in with Gem again to get the Dark Friar upgrade. All right, then Teratus sends fifty dollars. Says, dearest Poexel, I just wanted to wish you best of luck with your run, run, run. The Lord and Savior Demon Chocobo cometh. Run for your life. <laughs> <laughs> I actually should have used one. So can get Omega Goo donates $50 and says, Spoiler-free ending for the illusion of Gaia. The world we live on is the world we live on. Also, Will can breathe in space. <laughs> Alright, 32 is exactly where I need to be at. $10 from Doc Jazz. Hey, Brasentia! What? What do you call a group of physicians that lose all confidence in their craft and have to be institutionalized as a result? He doesn't know what. <laughs> Doctors with doubts and mental disorders. <sighs> yes, yes it was. <laughs> okay, I'll improve the conversation by pointing out that something I've been doing subtly throughout the whole game too is that I've been buffering my... Uh, inputs for selecting destinations on the world map because you can start you can you can start selecting the input before just after the camera finishes uh, zooming out but before the menu actually appears all right so the mountain temples i mean it's if you know where you're going it's a really easy dungeon just because there's nothing here that does a whole lot of damage and you've got the spin dash and psycho uh slider but knowing where to go it takes a while just because this is probably the maziest dungeon in the whole game yeah everything looks pretty samey in this dungeon so it's pretty easy to get confused about where exactly you are and where you should be going yeah and then there's several parts too where i'm where, where when i have to go a really long distance in a straight line i'm going to charge a spin dash just to use for faster movement because if i have to go in a straight line it um it's significantly faster to well i don't know about significantly but it's faster to um to spin dash that line instead of just running. Yeah, the threshold is a pretty significant distance though, so the vast majority of the time he's not going to be using it. Like there's only even a handful of times you use it, I think, in the entire run mm -hmm. for that purpose. So there I just did the chest invincibility glitch again, if you missed the earlier explanation. If I open a chest that has a key item that plays that f the extended fanfare in it, um, with either a jump attack or a psycho d slide, aka a move that makes you invincible while doing it. The game just forgets to make you uninvincible um, until you either do another move that would cause it to reset or leave the screen. So there, I just did it to um, 
just run through the spiders on my way back. A little detour here to get the one jewel in Mountain Temple. I mean, the way this dungeon works is that there's three uh, there's three um, mushroom drops I need to find in order to grow vines to lead to the next section. So that just kind of forces you to go into these side areas to find the mushroom drops. So yeah, there's one of the aforementioned places that I'm just spin dashing for faster movement. You can see what a long distance this is, so it's pretty worthwhile to do it. But this is a more fun way to get back. <laughs> That's just him showing off. This is one of the one of only generally two places in the game where lag is a thing too, just because of how many enemy spawns t are in close proximity here. So I'm going to be doing just a few subtle things in this next screen, especially to try to reduce lag a bit. Like when I spin dash through these skulls here, I'm going to try to kill one of the fire sprites with uh, with the end of my dash here. And that's just that there's one less that will be on screen when I'm coming back with the mushroom drops. So I'll have less chances of getting a bunch of lag if there's four of them on screen at once. And if you didn't notice, he did the uh, invincibility glitch again. There's a... Uh, what did you call them? Fire sprites? Fire sprites or fire fairies or I've something. I've never had a name for them other than <laughs> those awful things. Yeah. <laughs> They're really annoying, so using the invincibility glitch there is really nice because otherwise those guys just get in your way. Yeah. And They're the highest damaging enemy here, too. Although they only do three damage, though, which is pretty trivial with the amount of HP I have here. Yeah, there's nothing here that's scary. There's just stuff that's annoying. Because, yeah, just getting hit in places you don't want to slows you down. And I guess, theoretically, if you just, like, got hit a million times by the fire sprites, you would still die. Mm -hmm. but, and then I actually ran into that one on purpose just to... Um, just because I do need, want to wear down my health a bit for just because the the enemy closest to the teapot that I'm going to be using to death warp off of isn't terribly fast to get hit by. So I'd kind of like to l run down about half of my health before I get there. And I didn't do the invincibility glitch there actually because I would have lost it when I jumped off that next vine there just because you're invincible when uh, when you're jumping like that. So the game resets so your your state then. It would be kind of nice if it was possible just to be able to clip through all these spiders on the way out. So we're coming up on the end of this place. That noise, though. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> an air conditioner is going on or something. <laughs> when I'm doing this spin dash movement too, something I do have to be careful about is that I have to come to a complete stop before I start mashing L and R because um, if I'm still moving um, when I do it, I'll just guard and lose my charge instead of um, starting up the spin dash. I haven't actually done that yet and hopefully won't before the end of the run. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, so... And I'm just going to ram into this fire sprite until I get warped back to the entrance. And now for one of the jerkiest moments of Will, <laughs> yep. the huge jerk. Thanks to the translators. I have heard that he's considerably more friendly to Neil in the Japanese version. I'm trying to imagine how this is translated such that it, it takes on such a, like, strong, <laughs> jerky, like, I, I don't even have words for it. Yeah. So going into this secret room here and talking to that guy actually gives me a strength jewel. Um, stre strength um, is a mostly irrelevant stat in this run just because it doesn't affect how much damage you do to bosses that's fixed based on which form you're at at the time, but there's a couple non-boss enemies that I have to fight in the next two dungeons that are, that take a few less hits if I get that strength, so it, it by my very rough testing, it's about a wash between 
the time spent getting the jewel and the time that it saves, but more importantly, it gives you some safety in the pyramid, which is the most difficult dungeon in the game. So now I'm getting the uh, the final jewel in Euro City there. Oh, and I, the one that I yoinked out of that shrine there, I just <laughs> just said hi to the laborers and then left. The game doesn't even let you rescue them, too, if you want to. So, yeah, Neil's parents were ghosts. Mm -hmm. And Neil, understandably, is depressed <laughs> that his parents are dead. Well, not just dead, but murdered and then replaced by ghosts that were impersonating them, too. But and yeah. Will is ashamed. <laughs> yes. How dare you <laughs> mourn your parents? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. This is kind of meant to be a meant to be a, a um, fake out that the jackal finally found you or something. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a bounty hunter called the jackal that's been stalking us the most pretty much ever since we escaped from Edward's prison. Although you wouldn't know it because we're skipping uh, all of the NPCs that that mention that he still exists. And also, it doesn't make any sense at all. In no. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, we get Hamlet, Kara's pet pig. It'll be nice to have him along with the group for a good long time. Yeah. He'll make it all the way to the ending, I'm sure. So here I'm just speeding up the uh, <laughs> cutscenes here by going into the house to get my friends to catch up, and then going back to talk to them, and then... So for this next sequence here, by the way, I do, I do like who both Will and Car uh, Assume is waking the other person up, by the way. Because... <laughs> um, uh, Kara thinks that Will is like poking her or something, but Will thinks that Hamlet is. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can get some more comments in here too. Will we get a uh, family revelation about our protagonist here too? <laughs> Sounds with, uh, good. Along with a tasty snack. Soil Worker donates $100 and says, I was super impressed with the Necro Dancer run at AGDQ. It'd be cool to see them slay the witness too. I have $100 from Fast B saying, Whoa, forgot that Illusion of Guy was even on the schedule. <laughs> That's because it wasn't until last exactly. night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's a donation for improving my morning at work. I hope the vampire fight went well. It did very much. Thanks, bro. Uh, Trekkie Guy donates $5 and says, Thanks, glad to see Poex's Illusion of Guy run got in. Don't have much to give, but I figured that this seemed like a good time to do it. My favorite runner playing one of my favorite games. Hopefully the Mummy Queen isn't too trolly. Also, all hail good taste. So we just found, by the way, we just found out that uh, Will's mom was possessing Hamlet. So just, just put it in perspective, Will's dad is a flute and Will's mom is a baby pig. Hey, that's rude, man. And uh, I, I don't know, I think that explains why Will is such a jerk. How? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, hey, anyway, we're in uh, Angkor Wat now, which is... Um, it's a dungeon. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty... Uh, the main reason it's kind of a lengthy dungeon is just because uh, of the way that uh, death warps work or don't work in a lot of cases. My theory is that it's kind of programmed as three, uh, three dungeons in one, as far as the fact that it has checkpoints that still work, even if you don't have 100 dark gems. So that was one of the enemies, by the way, that uh, was a little faster to kill because of getting that strength jewel in Euro. Oops. Now we get to pay homage to uh, Indiana Jones here. Only it's bugs instead of snakes. Those noises, though. <laughs> yeah. Quintet has some great sound effects that they really enjoy using in every single game they ever made. Since it's been a while, probably mention orb canceling again. Actually, well, how about if one of you guys does it so I don't mess up this room? Uh, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you. Okay. So uh, certain enemies uh, will open up, uh, like kind of the next area, by blowing up a wall. And if he pauses uh, while that's happening, uh, before the, the 
explosion appears on the screen, you can still just pass through it like it did. Yeah, the game already has collision detection for that barrier or whatever disabled when you unpause, even though the animation hasn't finished yet. And there's a lot of parts of the route where I'm combining other menuing that I need to do with having to open the menu to um, activate that glitch. Music here is great, by the way. I mean, it's great in every like major dungeon, but it's great here. Yeah, the flies can be kind of obnoxious in the garden there, although health management isn't too big of a deal um, in Angkor Wat. So now we're going to be actually going to be quick using the uh, Dark Friar upgrade that I got for 30 jewels. There's a weaker version of it you can get for waiting in line for two and a half minutes in Euro, <coughs> but we're not interested in that. Because the, the the this is something I didn't know until I started speedrunning the game is that the the jewel the jewel version you can split at will instead of uh, having to hit an enemy. And we're going to be using it again to skip Earthquaker, which is otherwise a useless power up. But streamer, how is this 100% if you aren't waiting in line for two and a half minutes? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, so what I did there was I split the shot to using kind of one of the markings on the wall as a visual cue, um, and that comboed the golem about that was off screen at the time to death before it um, finished waking up. Because what happens when that, I mean, if you get anywhere near that golem and aggro it, it um, just becomes permanently invincible and, is, and it's just an impenetrable wall, and you're supposed to get the Earthquaker power for Friedan to, uh, that paralyzes it and lets you kill it before... Um, um, before it wakes up at all, but with this with the upgrade I can just do that uh, anyway So the reason he just stepped outside a minute ago was to step into this area and get this Respawn point so that when he went to pick up the red jewel He could just take a death warp and come back here instead of to the actual entrance of the dungeon mm -hmm. Which is what he was referring to when he said multiple dungeons in one Yeah, and then it also transformed me from Friedan who I needed to skip Earthquaker and back into will who I needed in order, need in order to slide through a couple passageways here. So I don't remember exactly how you're supposed to get through this area, but... You Apparently I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> you can navigate this blind. There you go. It's a little bit awkward, so it's not super uncommon to have problems with it. Yeah, just because the sliding point isn't, per it isn't perfectly aligned with the corner there, I have to kind of guesstimate where it is really I mean I bet what I was using in order to tell where I, I mean other than just memorizing the room layout I was also using the fact that will s switches from running to walking when he hits a wall to tell when I hit walls in the room and um, and then also the way the camera scrolls too because if you're at the edge of the screen it w and then like right like I am right now I the camera doesn't follow me so I was using that w will's position on the screen to tell when I was rounding a certain corner to get to the stairs I mean, what you're—I mean, what you're—the natural route is to get some dark crystal glasses in a different part of uh, Angkor Wat to um, let you actually see what you're doing there. I mean, and good luck finding the exit with exit blind, literally, because of because uh, you have to slide. Uh, and if you just go in straight lines in various places, you'll fall into pits. But in a speed run, that's a giant waste of time. Okay, now we're going to be getting to see some fun Mode 7 effects, too, because uh, something I've been doing all throughout the run is skipping the camera zooming out um, when I enter a destination just by holding the start button. But doing that when I enter Angkor Wat, for whatever reason, glitches out this cutscene here and makes the camera not zoom out. So instead of seeing a futuristic city, we get to see a really smushed futuristic city. <laughs> So this is also the only main dungeon, like the dungeon, a dungeon with its own theme that does not have a boss in it. Mm -hmm. There's just nothing. You just get to the end, you get the thing, and leave. Yeah, and I always wondered if there was ever intended to be a boss in Angkor Wat and it got cut out during development or something. They just couldn't come up with anything to top <laughs> Sandfanger. Yeah, and, and that's actually a bit of an unfortunate thing for speedrun purposes, too, just because that means that when I go to the pyramid, the next... Uh, um, dungeon, that means I'm really, really, really underleveled, like more so than any other part of the game. Yeah, just to, to recap that again, every time you kill a boss, uh, it catches you 
back up on levels because every time you clear a room, the game gives you some stat stat boosts. Um, and uh, we're obviously not doing that. Uh, so every time we kill a boss, it uh, conveniently gives us, gives us all these stat boosts that we're just ignoring. Yeah, that mecha- I mean, if that mechanic didn't exist, I don't think this would really be a speed game because uh, once I'm past, like... Um the second dungeon and anything and everything in the game would one shot me and then like the non-boss enemies that I'm required to fight would take uh, like 20 hits or something to kill in some cases probably. It would well be, maybe not that many but it would be a lot. Yeah at the least it would just be really tedious. This guy's being a bit of a jerk. <laughs> and the flies. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I mean, that death warp I did after getting the last jewel, is, I mean, doesn't really save much time, but I did it just for a health refill mostly. Right, it's a double-edged sword, the fact that there's that second checkpoint there. You can use it to get that little death warp after getting the red jewel, but that's not as time-saving as it would be if you could death warp back to the entrance after getting the Gorgon Flower. Yeah, and the checkpoints actually only activate when you enter them from, like, south to north, so I'm not hitting any checkpoints on my on the backtrack. So if I died like right here, I'd go all the way back to the uh, to um, the one before the final temple. Another reason why I got that uh, did that death warp just for healing, in case the flies were thirsty for blood, which they were. <laughs> they always are. So I'm just going to collect two gems here and then move on to Dao. So can I have some more donations here? So sure get the gem. thing. We have... Uh, here we go. $5.54. Hey, bro, Sencha. What do you call medical professionals that dislike dark beers? Doctors <sighs> without porters. <laughs> If it's easy to figure out before the pun is finished being read, yeah. I feel like it's a little weak. Yeah. I think you can do better. Come on. Yeah. We've got uh, $10 to hear Bob say schedule again. <laughs> uh. Don't applaud that. <laughs> yeah. But you say it so nicely. Thank you. Uh, $100 from Trish S. My son, Ozzy, looks forward to summer games done quick, and I think very highly of Doctors Without Borders. What a great combination, entertainment and making the world a better place. Play on. So this is where, momentarily, <laughs> uh, he's going to take out these two enemies, and uh, this is the second time in the game where there's a room with two enemies where when you take them out, you get a thing, and in this case, it's a defense boost. So that's going to really, really help in the pyramid yeah, where it, it, everything kills you. <laughs> really fast, too. I mean, I don't think you're really intended to get through some of these rooms without damage just because of how the enemies are positioned. I mean, in a casual playthrough, you'd be taking like one or two damage per hit and you'd have a lot more HP. So, but in a speed run, I take, if I, if I, even with getting that defense jewel, I'm going to take five damage per hit from the, uh, the uh, main dangerous enemy here. This is also the one time you must talk to uh, Gaia in order to get your aura. Just It's just called aura. And we'll be seeing it in action right now. Yeah, so the aura lets you melt into the ground, and it's, uh, it's required to use in several parts of the pyramid just to melt through floors. But I, it's, you're also invincible while doing it, and there's a glitch you can do with it, too, that we'll explain a little later. Probably not going to talk too much during these first couple rooms just because of how difficult they are. Yeah, for sure. So one of the scariest things in these rooms, I mean, there's many scary things in these rooms, but one of them is those orbs that shoot the little lasers. They deal a crap load of damage, and uh, they're very, very aggressive. By which I mean they sit in place, but they just they shoot you. That's pretty aggressive. <laughs> uh the interesting thing is you'd think that uh, with Will getting his kind of final form that uh, th it would be the, probably the easiest part of the dungeon, uh, but the shadow parts of this dungeon are probably the harder parts just because he lacks any sort of good uh, movement ability, whereas Will has uh, 
uh, his uh, slider and uh, the spin. Right. Yeah, no ranged attack either. So he's trying to take a lot of advantage of uh, uh, iframe dashing in order to get through places. But yeah, there's also little random things about the pyramid like this where you have to sit here and watch this stupid thing slide <laughs> down. I just did an iframe dash to hit that switch early. Oh, look, I've got so many herbs, too. So, but, yeah, th we're coming up on the scariest part of what I call the fun room, which is door three, just because of how many laser herbs there are and just how difficult getting through them without damage is. Yeah, there's a clump of six of them just in the corner of a two-tile-wide hallway, so you get over there, and they just will destroy you. But if you get a rhythm like that, you can just kill most of them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's possible to do that damage list too. Because I'm, what I'm trying to do is just wait until I see them spawn and then go to the bottom row so that I can close the rest of the distance and set up that stun lock on five of them before they hit me. Yep. So that was pretty good. Mm hmm I like to go for pseudopod poses when I'm collecting the uh, hieroglyph stones, too. <laughs> There's like three or four different frames of the attack that look really nice when they're paused like that. So at the end of each room of the pyramid, there's one of these teleporters that brings you back to the top level here. You can also death warp to get out of any of them, too. But um, I'm not doing that yet, just because I would lose my shadow form and have to retransform. Right. In order, obviously, as you see, in order to get down to you. By the way, what the heck is that red jewel? <laughs> like, who would... Why would you, like... <sighs> Thanks, Quintet. <sighs> yeah, I, I used to have a theory, too, that, um, like, that third door right there was designed by somebody who was on their last day of working at Quintet. That's <laughs> because <laughs> of how trolly it is. Oh, man. Speaking of trolls, uh, birds are jerks, and those uh, guy, those bird men are no exception. Agreed. You won't see it this time, but momentarily he's going to come back here and go through there. Uh, this is just a first visit to this room to get this red jewel. And... Yeah, because unfortunately I have to make two trips to two of the rooms in order to get jewels. I mean, I have to go back into that one just because... Um, because there's no way to get back up after you've melt down there and get the jewel than using the teleporter. And then the other one that I have to do a revisit for is the uh, third door, which I need Will's spin dash to get. But I need shadow in order to get to the bottom, which I already did. Yeah, this one is a lot more, uh, it's a lot slower. But in any case, when he goes, oh, geez. OK, so that's what the herbs are for. <laughs> and you can see it barely still restored like any of his HP. But whatever. So as he pops down here, there's a high likelihood the bird is just going to do that. Exactly that. Yeah. What a surprise. <laughs> I was using a glitch there called the aura attack glitch, by the way, too. Where uh, When I was up at the top, I attacked and then canceled the attack animation by using the aura to melt. And then that lets me actually keep attacking, even though there's no animation during the melt. And I'm using that um, in a couple places, like right here, too, so that I can knock the Birdman away if he's right under me when I reform like that. But it unfortunately doesn't stop him from just waiting a moment and then stabbing <laughs> and then you. And stabbing me, yes, <laughs> as he did several times in my last practice run. He's definitely on his game both of those times. So I get iframe dash to get through those We guys got the uh, pencil, uh, <laughs> pencil pose there, as I call it. So inventory management's really important coming into the pyramid because he's collecting these six hieroglyph stones, which, remember, your inventory is only 16, 16 spots. Yeah. So that's a huge chunk of your inventory. Oops, uh, two. Not to mention that uh, you have all the melodies here that you've gotten throughout the game and the R that you uh, were given by Gaia. A lot of uh, inv inventory is being taken up by required items. All aspects of this game are very well designed. <laughs> I 
How many herbs are you sitting on right now? <laughs> like, I had like six, I think, coming in because I had three and didn't use any of them on the vampires. So Jeez. I'm being more liberal than I other, with them than I otherwise would be just because I cause I'm gonna, I know I'm going to be running out of space uh, for really, really early with holding that many herbs. An option, I, another option is just to go and to talk to Gaia to heal between rooms if I need it to. The checkpoints in this dungeon uh, do work on a room by room basis. So if you die in a room, you'll go back to the beginning of that room, but mm -hmm. uh, you'll become Will. So you have to go back and get Shadow for these several rooms where you need to be Shadow. Got the wave here. All right, so we are done with Shadow until the boss now, because I can use Will for the other three rooms. Two of them I have to, because they have uh, spin dash ramps, and then door number six I can be any character for, and I'll just be Will just for just because spin dash makes me, lets me get through faster. And as a consequence of that, as just mentioned, he'll get to use uh, death warps in order to leave those rooms instead of having to teleport and sink back down. So he's taking a lot of damage here, but he's going to be immediately death warping, so it doesn't matter too much. Yeah. This isn't the game glitching out, by the way. There is an invisible <laughs> enemy in the corner there that's shooting those projectiles that I was just ramming into. Invisible jerkbird. Yep, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. So for the will rooms too, there's actually some pretty slick looking do enemy dodges I can do to um, get through rooms without damage, but there's no real incentive to do it just because I need to death warp after each one to get back to the uh, hub quickly and taking a couple hits uh, en route speeds up um, how quickly I can death warp afterwards. This is the room by the way that you can use any of the three characters to complete, but just because there's several sections where you can use spin dash for faster movement, I do, and it's also just so so much easier to uh, to spin dash through instead of what I was having to do with with shadow in those other rooms. Two more tablets to go, and then we have a roasty toasty cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> That's a word for it. There's a couple little <laughs> annoying nuances about the dash ramps, and mostly in room one. Um, as far as um, places where you just need you need to have a certain amount of distance in order to um, just make it all the way up without before you lose your uh, dash momentum. Those are some of those aforementioned, like, <laughs> kind of s nice enemy dodges that are pointless because uh, now I just need to take more dam intentional damage to set up the death warp. Oops. I love those optional spike walls. <laughs> yeah. Or ceilings. As scary as that spike crusher ceiling looks, it actually only does one damage, regardless of your defense. <laughs> it's those herbs, dude. <laughs> Gotta eat more. It's a filthy habit. I still have another tablet, I'll just do this now. And then, um, yeah, and then, I mean, the, the order that I'm completing these rooms in, by the way, too, is designed just to optimize the number of times I need to go into dark spaces to transform, in this case, not at all, after the first time. And then, um, and also collecting the red jewels. And then I'm do I'm saving room number one for last because um, mostly because the um, this is the room where doing a death warp after getting the tablet would be the slowest out of all of the rooms that I can complete as well. 
because I'd have to char I'd have to dash back across another dash ramp in order to just get to any kind of enemy. It's also pretty easy to get through here without taking much damage too, which and I want to have my HP full or close to full before fighting the boss. Just because remember how under leveled I am? Well, it gets even worse because I didn't I haven't actually gotten any of the uh, stat ups from the pyramid, so. Uh, the boss does 15 damage ahead at my stats. So that's a two shot. All right, so I have all of the, I could have, I, at any point I could come back up here and place the tablets, but there's just, there's no reason to do so before getting all six of them. We can probably actually do a donation here, but uh, yeah, pay attention to Will's uh, hair during this uh, this cutscene here. Get another cut, another donation. Sure. I have a donation from Kalaric. He donates a hundred dollars and says, "Had to get in while Poexel was rocking IOG. Glad to see it got in, even if only I just woke up and will have to catch the start after the end. Real life sequence break." Money to runner's choice. Thanks, Cleric. And just a very quick DJ hacks with five dollars. <laughs> great job for a great cause. Flame retardant hair gel. Sadly, the jackal didn't have any. This is so creepy, by the way, too. <laughs> I'm really impressed that this made it past '90s. Uh, Nintendo game uh, rules like the, <laughs> the way his hand is shaking <laughs> like that too is just and the death rattle. Yeah. Oh man. He's asking Will, or she's asking Will, right after we did that. <laughs> it's, it's <an> odd <laughs> he literally just lit someone on fire <laughs> to stop them. <laughs> Been watching too much Day or Zex. <laughs> So obviously, once he puts the hieroglyphs in, he's going to get access to the uh, boss of the pyramid. You really, really want those herbs, I think. Oops. <laughs> this menuing actually really sucks. <laughs> it's not particularly easy. Yeah, just because, I mean, depending on how many herbs you have or don't have at this point, the tablets are going to go into different slots. I mean, there's a there's a diary you can get back in Dao that tells you the solution, but it's just basically from rooms one through six, that's the order that you put them in the uh, slots. I actually had no idea that that was how. <laughs> <laughs> that's all there is to it. Dang. So yeah, obviously he's going to take Shadow to the boss because trying to fight the Mummy Queen as anything other than Shadow would be completely insane. And slower. Because Shadow, Shadow does the highest possible damage to bosses and... Three. Ah, great start here. Alright, I'm not going to talk much here just because I die in two hits. Yeah, for sure. So, each time he uh, hits the Mummy Queen, until she hits half health, uh, she's going to split into this large circle of blue ghosty thingies. Uh, and he's just going to kind of use the aura to wait it out. And uh, then she'll reassemble nearby, kind of at the center of where the things are located. And then he'll just hit her again and hopefully not get hit by that giant scary attack. And repeat until she hits half health. At that point, she's going to get a little dicier. So she's going to have a second uh, second response that she can do at that point, which uh, will be that she splits into a smaller ring of these little ghosty thingies. Like we did not see this On time. the next hit, yeah. Yeah. And uh, if she does that, there's a specific one of those that you have to hit, the bottom left, as you see there, in order to get her to reassemble. Uh, so you actually want her to do that, because it's really not that difficult, at least for Poexel, to hit the bottom left one. <laughs> wow. That's but uh, unfortunately... <laughs> yeah, and it's, um, it's, it's one out of four odds to get the spreading ghosts um, instead of the ring during phase two. But yeah, every time you get the ring, it's really easy to just... Nice. 
that was pretty clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, RNG wasn't the greatest because I got two spreading ghosts during phase two, but I mean, I, the, the circle didn't escape from me at all when, when it happened, which is how you lose time on the fight, if, assuming you don't die. I, I don't actually know if I ever noticed before that the jackal's corpse is now there as like a, yeah, skeleton. a skeleton. Yeah, <laughs> He is actually burned away to just bones. The, yep. the fire did stop eventually. <laughs> <laughs> this game is family friendly. Maybe uh, Kara was nice and uh, put the flames out while you were fighting uh, the boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rated E for everyone, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're, the pyramid was effectively the final dungeon of Illusion of Gaia, the final like main story dungeon, because we're going to the Tower of Babel next, which is, I mean, it's just a boss gauntlet where I'm refighting every uh, every boss from the main dungeons. Um, there are I haven't there, um, the, w I, as soon as I get into the tower, I'm going to be getting the fiftieth jewel, but there were three that I didn't get yet in um, Dao that I'm going to be going back for. So I guess while we're while well, we're doing yet another crazy parachute uh, out of a billion, I guess we can have a few donations. Yeah, no problem. We can put some donations in. We have... Uh, <laughs> really? Okay. I, 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 I think I can see where this is heading. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have Hebrosentia. What do you call a group of medical professionals that don't have anyone that wants to date them? Doctors without quarters. <laughs> However, to counter that, I do have a two hundred and fifty-six dollar donation nice. from nice. Vaxherd. Oh, hey Vaxherd! Yeah. And it says you've found a large, <laughs> <laughs> yummy donation. Put this towards Poexel's choice. And good luck on the rest of the run. Thanks, Vaxherd. And Anonymous donates $5 and says, Can Bob please say aluminum? <laughs> you thought you were going to trap me into saying aluminium, didn't you? <laughs> well, they were right. Yes, it's true. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Damn those cunning donators. I played right into their hands. <laughs> Hey, Brosentia! What? What do you call physicians in a terribly designed hospital? Doctors without corridors. You know, you can see it, like, you can see it coming like an oncoming train. Yeah, it, and yet it's, it's, still it's, like, it's like a disaster, but you can't look away. It still just runs you right over. Yeah. We have $10. Oh, my God. They're still coming. Uh... <laughs> We're doing bad MSF puns. Here's one. What do you call medical professionals that like to get right into the main course? What? Doctors without hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> so. All right. So boss You're replays. all fired. <laughs> so the bo these bosses are pretty much the same as the first fight, except they're massively easier because you get to fight them as shadow. Some of them have do, have do have a little extra surprise in that Kastoth can shoot two crystals at once instead of one, but uh, when I'm doing three damage a hit, getting the one cycle, which from the original fight is the hardest trick in the game, in my opinion, is pretty trivial here. Right. You just automatically transform into shadow for each one, which is great, and uh, other than that, the only real difference, uh, or other than those things, the only real difference is that the the arenas are just slightly altered and they're mm -hmm. in the weird like isometric uh diamond shapes so it actually makes some of these arenas like really annoying they're just very awkwardly shaped also we get to see the quintet background yeah so you <laughs> might remember this from the final boss <laughs> factories or it's in every quintet game at least once So one Viper, since I'm doing triple damage to what I did to Viper first time, he only lasts one cycle, if even that. So next is the Vampire's Refight, which is the, it's the most technical one, just because it's pre, I'm doing a pretty different strategy than I did because of getting to be Shadow. Uh, if you remember the Aura Attack glitch I mentioned in the Pyramid, I do that by um, use, attacking and then canceling the animation by using the Aura to melt into the ground. 
And while I'm doing that, I can actually continue attacking, only there's no animation, and then um, I can abuse the, the fact that the vampires have no, uh, do, don't do any contact damage in order to set up that glitch and get a bunch of hits in, although just like the first fight, it's a little random how easily I can set it up. So I'm, it, depending on what they do, I may opt to not do it and just smack them with uh, my pseudopod. On the bright side, they deal significantly less damage, although you still don't want to get hit by those attacks. But yeah, you can see how quickly the female vampire is going down to that. Mm -hmm. I've got so many herbs, I'm just guess I'm gonna just face tank the male vampire. <laughs> At least I got to show off the glitch on the female. So you, yeah, it was just melting and then her HP was draining away. A really, really clean uh, setup can do over half of one of their health in one use. How many herbs do you have left? Three? Uh, two. Just a reminder that even if you ate all of them, you still wouldn't regenerate to full health <laughs> because this game is yeah. <laughs> And the return of our buddy, Trollfanger. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, if I get really, really lucky, I can kill him in two, uh, two cycles. Which I'm not getting. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Well, he's past the point now where if I if he did the egg pattern, then I'd be able to kill him. And now it's just getting uh, silly because if he does, I mean, I'm I'm kind of waiting for it to happen for the last hit where it doesn't actually matter. Okay, there we go. Uh, I was expecting him to just never give it to you. Yeah, or never give it to me <laughs> at all. Yeah. <laughs> what a boss. Oh, if you have any questions uh, about why bosses are now becoming my transportation to climb the tower, ah, uh, good, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fine video game. <laughs> So then the mummy, the mummy queen refight, which I mean, it's no, it's not really any different than what I did like five minutes ago. But um, it's meant to actually be harder, just because she does actually technically do more damage than the first fight. But because I actually have real defense stats instead of n nothing, it's much much easier. And then also the room layout in this case makes the fight easier because in the original fight in the pyramid, there were blocks in the middle in front of the. Uh, the entrance door that uh, make dodging her um, shots a little harder in some situations, and that's just not here a thing in the arena for the refight. So once again, once she drops below half health, I'm uh, hoping she gives me the, both, hope, both hoping that she gives me the um, the small ghost ring and that I can hit the. Uh, the correct ghost that start, always starts in the lower left corner before the ring breaks away. If it breaks away, then I lose a bunch of time just because it bounces around and I have to chase it. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the next hit. Ah, uh, okay. That was always going to be spreading ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it what? begins. <laughs> Okay, that's a good recovery. Yeah. You can, uh, if you are able to tell, I, I'm pretty sure the stream is 60 FPS, but basically the way you can tell the difference between the one you're supposed to hit and the ones that don't matter is <laughs> that uh, the one, yeah, of course, uh, the ones that don't matter are flickering, so uh, they, you know, appear slightly transparent. All right, that was fine. And it, when, just because she gave me a spreading ghost right off the bat, that kind of kind of made the rest of the fight a little more difficult too, just because if she forms the small ring when she's in the kind of close to the right edge of the screen, the ring bounces off the wall in a really big way that's uh, really, really easy to get hit by if you don't know it's coming. So I was trying to be a little cautious there, even though I probably didn't need to be because of 
having two herbs left, plus the ability to, uh, plus two different means that I can use to heal before the final boss. So just to clarify the whole, like, story deal, uh, there's a comet coming, it's going to obliterate everything or something like it's that. It's interfering evolution with evolution. Yeah, that's happening yeah. for some reason. I don't know, whatever. There's a story. Yep. Good video game. Should we have a uh, Twitch chat guess the number here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, it takes 30 uh, snake hits in order to uh, win this mini game to get the last two jewels that I'm collecting. I'll uh, say what my PB is after I'm finished. Yeah, I, I think you should guess somewhere between 30, Nine. which he needs, <laughs> and let's say like 700. <laughs> That's probably one. a good range. There'll be a few winners in there, I guess. <laughs> I have a donation about the snake game. Go Rich right Blues ahead. for ten dollars saying, "Hey, Wexel, he's hoping for a hundred and three or better on the snake game." Okay, I'll now see that's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> I'll donate again if you reach a hundred or more. Uh, also, what's your favorite fight? Uh, I mean, quintet game. <laughs> well, Good luck. Yeah, I should add that to my Twitch bio. <laughs> This takes a minute, by the way. Oh. 96. Yeah, I, I, I was a if I'd have been like a pixel or farther to the right, I would have gotten more hits on the right one because I saw it. I missed it a couple completely a few times. All right, now, chat mods, you've got to figure out uh, who guessed uh, the closest without going over. Price of right rules. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here's our donation incentive. Yep. Which got smashed before the run even started. So this is Jim's Mansion, which... Um, is the, it's the grand prize for for getting all 50 jewels, which good, if you actually did that without a guide, you have my utmost respect. <laughs> Congratulations. Now here's a dungeon with a whole bunch of annoying enemies and a ton of lag. Yeah, so I'm going to be using the slider to kill as many of these eyeballs as I can without a whole lot of uh, detouring for um, just to reduce lag, especially on this part here, just because all the enemies on the right, on the left side of that wall, to my left, are still loaded. Also, shout outs to the little gap under the staircase, <laughs> which it literally took my brother and I like a year to realize existed. All right, and then this is Solid Arm, who was also the first boss of Soul Blazer. And um, if you actually read the text, he explains kind of the nefarious purpose behind the red jewels. So this fight, he's gonna make it look really easy. Uh, it is like it's somewhat easy in a in the strictest sense, but like what he has to do every time he's attacking, he's uh, moving forward very slightly, and then he's hitting this conveyor belt, moving backward very slightly. Or sorry forward even more very slightly, so it's the adjust position just a little bit. Ah, took two All right. You did get the swag, like, you know, jump attack finish, though, so that, that was good. Yeah, but I was actually trying to go for was to um, jump attack at a certain point in his rhythm that I went, jumped over the fireball, last fireball, and then didn't get hit by it. Just not quite swag enough. <laughs> So yeah, now the 100% requirements are fulfilled, so... Off to the final boss. Got a few minutes of cutscenes before I fight uh, first the Chaos Comet and then Dark Gaia. So I guess we can get a last couple rounds in. Yes, we can. Uh, Swege donates $100 and says, so I heard you like puns, huh? All right, what do you call Doctors Without board? Uh, never mind, I already... I donate half towards saving the animals, half towards killing the animals, and half towards announcer's choice? That's a lot of halves. <laughs> you might say that that donation was... half-coordinated. Speaking uh, of half-coordinated... Uh, <laughs> I have five dollars from the book who says this one's for you, half-coordinated. You sound like you need a nap pretty badly. I, I really... <laughs> really need to be in bed right now. <laughs> and uh, the book is putting their $5 towards Sam for Final Fantasy Adventure Girl Name, which was half coordinated runner's choice. Twin 
What I will do, however, is plug the Humble Bundle. Because they have been working with us for a while now. And they have done over $75 million for charity, such as work with Doctors Without Borders and many, many more. Head over to HumbleBundle.com and you can find our SGDQ bundle that includes games such as Dust Force, Guacamole, or Melee, I guess, <laughs> Super Meat Boy, Escape Go, a bunch of serious stamp stuff, Freedom Planet, and VDD, VDD. You could also say Malay if you want to cover every possible base. Yeah, but I don't, really. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so in typical quintet fashion, we now gain a uh, attack that lets us shoot phoenixes. <laughs> uh, Will and uh, Kara kind of do a fusion to be able to do that. And then, yeah, and then we finally find out the purpose of the <laughs> mystic statues we've been collecting the whole game, which we, up until this point, right before the final boss, we had really no idea why we were doing this. Other than that, our uh, a flute told us to. Now, instead, there are ghosts telling us to, and we still have no idea why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. RPGs. <laughs> <laughs> and, also, and in also a typical quintet fashion, the music for the final boss is incredible. So I'd studied a lot of astronomy, and I can tell you for a fact that uh, this is exactly what comets look like. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a great first phase of the final boss. Every time you hit him, uh, the phase becomes unattackable and uh, starts shooting acid at you. So this phase takes forever, <laughs> but is otherwise really trivial. He just uses the aura to avoid the uh, acid actually hitting him. Yeah, I mean, Quintet was nice in that it only gave um, gave the Comet head um, half of a health bar, basically, so that this phase doesn't really outstay its welcome too badly. For the most part, it's pretty straightforward, so there's not a huge danger of him, like, I mean, there's almost no danger of him dying on this phase, and then there's actually fairly low danger of dying on the second phase as well. It's kind of a reward for <laughs> <laughs> the final boss is not super dangerous. So he'll be doing the uh, our attack glitch just to get that last attack in on the frame that the phase comes up. All right, and the second phase is very similar. He's just going to kind of be swinging at the boss, but it's not going to be available to attack all the time, so he's just going to have to keep waiting. Um, in the meantime, he's just going to try to make sure he's constantly attacking so that when the phase does become attackable... Yeah, because is, there is a bit of randomness as far as how many um, homing shots she shoots before the phase uh, opens up. So ideally, he could get this in three cycles. It looks like he's on good pace to do that, so be ready on it's not, time. Yeah, it's not guaranteed, but if I get five hits on the next cycle, then that'll be it. Yeah, time is when the, the face becomes quite ugly and explodes. <laughs> Anytime now. Please. Ah, just if I one hit. All right, so that costs about 20-ish seconds if I have to get a four round. It's a, it's something that's just real. It's it's something that's just really really hard to just like get a like a hundred percent consistent setup for because of the RNG with the uh, when the mouth opens. Next hit is and, yeah. Next hit is time and time. There it is. So your time was 2.21.34. Nice. That is quite good. That's very good for a marathon safe route. So uh, now we're going to, I mean, you're a little bit underestimated, so we're going to sit and uh, enjoy the credits, right? Um, the ending. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think we probably better move on to, <laughs> to the desk games coming afterwards. I think you, people should play the game themselves to uh, experience <laughs> Are you game. sure the next game is Shatterhand? Like, <laughs> so, so the toss up here is <laughs> do we want to read 20 minutes of slow scrolling text that you can't speed up 
Or do we want to watch Clage do a run? I, I think we want to watch some uh, <laughs> some bullets get punched out of thin air. <laughs> yeah. Clage is in favor of the credits. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought I recognized this voice, but I wasn't yeah. 100%. But yeah, but yeah, that was six minutes faster than my uh, HGDQ 2012 run of this game in category, so I'm really happy with that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for Poexel. <laughs> and while we are setting up for the next game, I'm going to try and power through a bunch of these Illusion of Gaia um, donations that we've got in. $10 from Cypher, who says, Great Illusion of Gaia run. I hope to see Terra Nigma next year. Shirato, $20. Greetings from Japan. I haven't been able to watch most of the runs live because of time zones, but I've been having fun catching them after the fact. Best of luck for the remainder of the Illusion of Gaia run. Seth Carlson sends us $20 and says, Fun fact, when I was a kid, I thought Illusion of Gaia was a spin-off of Legend of Zelda, because their logos have similar fonts and they play kind of the same. 